गुड आफ्टरनून एवरीबडी आय मिसेस गीता सावंत टीचर फ्रॉम सिटीयन हायर सेकंडरी स्कूल कुरसोर एम वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर दिस वेबिनार दिस वेबिनार इज ऑर्गनाइज बाय श्रीमती चंद्रभागा तुकोबा नायक हायर सेकंडरी स्कूल कुरसोर एम इन कॉलॅबरेशन विथ नॅशनल स्किल क्वालिफिकेशन्स फ्रेमवर्क दॅट इज एन एस क्यू एफ आय वेलकम द गेस्ट स्पीकर ऑफ टुडेज वेबिनार डॉक्टर जॉलिन फेर्नांडिस स्टेट कॉर्डिनेटर्स ऑफ गोवा समग्र शिक्षा अभियान मिस्टर जॉन सिल्वेरा मिस्टर भारत नायक अँड मिस्टर नागेंद्र कोरे प्रिन्सिपल्स टीचर्स अँड स्टुडंट्स फ्रॉम अदर हायर सेकंडरीज प्रिन्सिपल ऑफ अवर हायर सेकंडरी मिसेस श्रीदेवी पी आर स्टुडंट्स अँड माय कलिग्स श्रीमती चंद्रभागा तुकोबा नायक हायर सेकंडरी स्कूल कुरसोर एम हॅज बीन टेकिंग स्टेप्स to create awareness about the various issues in the local community by conducting rallies performing street play etc in this pandemic also we want to be a part of awareness program and make you aware or conscious of preventive measures to control the spread of pandemic through dietary and lifestyle changes now i request our healthcare instructor the coordinator of today's program dr sayami prabhu desai to brief us about the webinar good evening everyone as many students and teachers are new to this webinars i will first like to brief you all with this webinar series conducted by healthcare sector with the help of the health guidance and support of the principal staff of the high secondaries and our rms coordinators as we all know the healthcare workers are working very hard at the tough time of covid-19 pandemic so we as a team decided to conduct such webinars as a initiative to educate community with the most necessary daily current topics in healthcare sector and we aim to provide factual information to our students parents and teachers we will come up with such many sessions to keep you all all upgraded and we look forward for your support so let us make the best use of this opportunity and great uh, gain right knowledge from our expert speakers for choosing healthy lifestyle so we'll shortly begin with our speaker thank you thank you sayami topic for today's webinar is dietary and lifestyle changes to fight covid-19 and to guide us on this topic we have a guest speaker dr jolin fernandez now i request our principal madam shri devi pr to introduce and welcome our guest speaker a very good evening to all of you principals the state level coordinators of nsqf healthcare instructors of all high secondaries other teachers parents and my dear students it's really a proud moment for me to welcome you all for the state level webinar on dietary and lifestyle changes to fight covid-19 on behalf of the management the staff pta and students of jain utkarsh shikshan sanstha shrimati chandrabaga tukaba naik high secondary school i warmly welcome all of you for this webinar as you all know we are in the middle of a crisis an unusual situation the novel corona virus outbreak has change the way we live our lives so we have uh, chosen the topic the topic is well chosen for today's webinar dietary and lifestyle changes to fight covid-19 we have with us dr jolin fernandez a homeopathic consultant and clinical nutritionist as the resource person the right person for the right occasion i would say it is my privilege to introduce her to you all 
she was awarded bachelor's degree in homeopathic medicine and surgery from goa university in 2012 she also did diploma in uh, nutrition and health education and uh, post graduation she did from the prestigious institution symbiosis pune in the year 2015 She is also a lifetime member of the Indian Naturopathic Organization of India. She has been the resource person for various programs organized by Rotary Club, Indian Red Cross, etc. So we have with us a young dynamic personality with us as the resource person, and I hope and I'm sure that all of us. will be able to learn a lot more from her so let me proudly present to you all the resource person of today's webinar dr jolin fernandez good evening everybody and i uh, thank uh, madam shri devi for the wonderful introduction um well uh, uh, we'll begin with the with the webinar now um yes uh, i think it's high time and it's the right time that we talk about the most uh, important uh, system in our body uh, well i know everybody goes to the doctor for some reason or the other we go we go to a skin specialist if there's a skin problem we go to a cardiac uh, doctor if there is a problem with our heart we go to a diabetologist if we've got diabetes we go to an orthopedic doctor if we have got a problem with our joints or our bones but has anybody gone to the immunity doctor i don't think so till today there is uh, there's no specialization that is created to you know uh, build your immunity or nobody even hardly talks about the most important system of our body but i think covid 19 has really really stressed on this and now we are all realizing how important our immune system is so let's talk about the most important system in the body i will be sharing my screen shortly and then we will begin with the uh, webinar okay so uh, what is the immune system well i know there are teachers uh, principals and also a lot of students here so let's talk about this what is the immune system or what exactly you know uh, do you think we need to do do we need to really boost the immune system what we need to do well uh there are a lot of diseases that happen to our body when the immune system is weak and there are a lot of uh, diseases that happen also when we have a hyperactive immune system so whenever anybody talks about boosting the immunity you have to be very careful because it is not always about having a very high immune system it is always about having a balanced immune sy system a regulated a well balanced immune system all right so um i think all of you can identify this person uh he is mr ajmal kasab he was responsible for the uh, you know the uh, terrorist attack in india in mumbai a few years back now uh, when this person entered the country he was not identified by our uh, police force at the borders right why did this happen it is because this person never entered with guns or you know with bombs all over him he entered just like a layman or just like a normal person or just like a college boy with just a ha have a sack on his shoulders now similarly this happens to our body what we have to do is we have to train our immune system or we have to make our immune system very intelligent to identify threats like this not ajmal kasab but bacteria viruses a lot of diseases like also which are caused by fungus various kind of parasites so what we exactly need to do is have a regulated immune system by making the immune system intelligent enough to understand what is a disease what is going to cause a disease and something that is not going to cause a disease now also there is another factor why do we all wear a helmet to protect our brain if we have a fall on the bike or or, or something like this but does it ensure that wearing a helmet you're not going to meet with an accident no right so we do wear a helmet to take a precaution but we are not 
ensured that we are not going to have an accident similarly in our body so we need to have this strong immune system not because we are not going to be attacked by viruses we are not going to be attacked by we are definitely going to be attacked some time or the other by a virus by a bacteria by any kind of a parasite but what we need to do is we have to be prepared all right so what are the factors that cause this imbalance in our immune system so i have put down a few factors uh, the most important and the most uh, critical factors that cause an imbalance in the immune system the most important one is the unhealthy eating habits now when we say unhealthy eating habits everybody thinks that you know we have to stop eating fat or we have to stop eating carbohydrates or we have to stop eating only sugars but what exactly is unhealthy eating so these are topics which i will also be covering in this webinar second is pollution a lot of pollution of we can only see pollution like water pollution soil uh, you know polluted the garbage we can see but what about the radiations what about the gadgets like uh, i know children who have been sleeping with their cell phones just besides them this is also a kind of a pollution it it's a pollution that cannot be seen so radiation is a very very ha hazardous pollution and it is really affecting our immune system second are people who are already suffering from a couple of diseases like diabetes obesity cardiac related problems the fourth one is habits of smoking and drinking i've only written habits of smoking and drinking but there are so many other addictions addictions to your phone addictions to whatsapp addiction to facebook addiction to instagram all these are really affecting the immune system next is deprived sleep now um i will uh, give you a brief about how and why sleep is important here itself um when we go to sleep that is between the say 10:30 to about 3 o'clock in the night um what happens is our brain produces a very good hormone and this hormone helps us to fight cancers it helps us to build our immune system it is basically called the natural cancer vaccine which is produced only during this time so what happens to people who sleep a little later since the lockdown has started i have parents who come and tell me that you know my kids don't sleep anywhere before 12 30 o'clock 2 o'clock they're always on netflix so they're always on their phones they're playing games so what is happening to you you are being deprived of this natural cancer vaccine which is being which is supposed to be produced by your body so think about it have good sleep to have a good immune system and next is lack of activity now that everybody especially the kids are at home and they're always in front of a laptop you know even studying the activity level seems to be really low and with the monsoons that had come there were no children playing out but this is one very big factor that affects our immune system all right now what are the habits that you can do to you know have a fit life and uh, you know to also build your immune system it is not only about having a good or a strong immune system it is also feeling good it is also to stay fit now the first important and very 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 common thing that i tell all my clients is have local seasonal and traditionally home cooked food now what is this local seasonal traditional now we have already always heard of this adage called uh, an apple a day keeps a doctor away isn't it now uh, do you think it holds true for a state like goa an apple a day keeps a doctor away i really don't think so because apple is not local to goa first of all right so apple is a fruit that is available up north you know uh, himachal and uh, those states so if those people talk about eating an apple every day it is a very good idea for them but for us in goa it is a very bad idea so what should we go and eat we should eat our locally sourced vegetables and fruits what is local to goa uh, bananas papayas chikus custard apples pineapples pomegranate now there'll be a lot of melons which will be coming as the winter will start setting in so these are local foods now what is seasonal i've seen a lot of people eating certain fruits which are 
sometimes which is not this uh, during seasons which are not particular for that fruit i have uh, seen clients you know or uh, asking for exotic mangoes during the winter season or you know uh, during these months now during september and october well do you think it is the right time to eat a mango absolutely not you should be eating the mango the king of all fruits only during the summer season because that is the time you are supposed to eat a mango so these are a few examples i have given you but there are a lot many which you will be knowing but try to see that you eat local and seasonal now what is traditionally cooked home cooked food traditional food is our recipes which were followed by your mothers your grandmothers your great grandmothers our grandparents you know with a lot of love with a lot of affection and with their basic knowledge had uh, you know uh, come with come up with these recipes for us and we nowadays try to put low fat cream um condensed milk instead of sugar we try to put stevia in gajar ka halwa we try to put sugar uh, sugar free powder into it for our dishes so this is how you ruin a traditionally cooked recipe so i would say stick to eating your home cooked traditionally uh, traditional food in the uh, recipe which was followed by your grandparents or your mothers or your great grandparents also the second most important thing that we need to keep in mind is sit at one place and eat your food uh not in front of the tv not with any gadget now this is something that is happening to us because we are very idle today we have nothing else to do so we take our plate and go and sit in front of the tv um if anybody has gone to the theater now it's been almost 6 months that all the theaters are closed but i know there was a time when uh, every weekend would be movie night or uh, you know we would rush to the theaters to watch the latest blockbuster right so what would happen is we would order that tub of popcorn or you know the the regular size popcorn and then sometimes even before the movie starts that popcorn is over we have finished everything i am i'm sure there is 99% of people who finish that popcorn even before the the interval right now why does this happen to us if you want to experiment get that same amount of popcorn tub come home sit on your table or sit on the floor without any disturbance without the tv without the phone or without any gadget or without any distraction and try eating it and see how long you're going to take because then that is when you will start realizing that your jaw is hurting after munching so much and popcorn starts getting very boring all right so what happens to you in the theater why are you able to finish it so fast now when your stomach is about 40% full uh, you know you've been uh, you you're eating a normal lunch or you're eating your um, uh, breakfast or dinner and when your stomach is about 40% full the stomach sends a signal to the brain saying baba now you are full and you need to stop eating all right now imagine if your brain is focused on to a a movie or a game or some kind of a video that is playing in front of you what happens it happens so that the brain does not receive the signal so your stomach keeps sending the signal stop eating stop eating stop eating but the brain just ignores the signal and what you end up doing is you end up overeating you end up stuffing yourself and you are so full that you know you feel like you're going to explode any minute right so this is one very very important factor now when you overeat there's a lot of acidity there's a lot of hyper acidity there is burping belching gas distension you may be passing flatus also so a lot of these things affect your immune system the third most one of the most important factors for a good life and for good immunity is exercise now a lot of people come and tell me yes i do exercise i walk for about an hour every day i walk for about 5 kilometers every day but let me tell you walking is just an activity when i say exercise it means that you have to move every muscle in your body you have to move those joints all those joints make them very active that is what i mean so the kind of exercises that i am talking about are not going to the gym lifting up weights and you know 
running a marathon or doing a thousand skips and doing hundred surya namaskars nothing like that you don't have to be a pro at exercising just make sure you get 30 minutes of very simple basic exercises where you're stretching all your muscles the basic forward bending a few surya namaskars start your day with about 4 to 5 surya namaskars more than enough what is very important is being consistent the more you're consistent with your exercises the better it is so reduce your sitting time move more even the children and even teachers who are uh, you know doing their online classes every day i know it is very very daunting to be in front of the laptop so for every 30 minutes or maybe every 45 minutes you can just stand where you're sitting just stand stretch your hands stretch your back you know move your neck and that really really helps all right the next is sleeping on time i've already covered sleep so the fourth point is sleep now what are the habits that you need to change as soon as possible the first most important thing that this is something that i really really tell my uh, patients also is diets that deprive you of nutrition i have seen a lot of people especially young girls and young women um you know post pregnancy or you know before the marriage i don't know somehow in india we give it marriage especially for girls a lot of importance you have to be a certain size you know you have to look fit for the wedding you need to fit into that wedding dress or that the sari blouse has to look uh, really pretty and even teenagers nowadays i have young teenagers coming to me and wanting to be on diets and just because they are not happy with the way they look all right so diets and most of the time the information that we have on the internet only talks about depriving yourself of good food they will tell you cut rice cut ghee cut milk uh, what else i don't know get, go completely uh, vegan vegan is the new trend so any kind of a diet that deprives you of good food remember it is not good for you what is going to happen in the long run is that you are depriving yourself from vitamin b12 from vitamin d from calcium from iron this is the reason why migraine headaches are on a rise infertility in young girls is on a rise uh, hair fall i see in a month at least about 40 to 50 women who come to me only with the problem of hair fall why should young girls and young women have hair fall you know especially in a state like goa where we have uh, access to all possible good food isn't it so when a diet talks about depriving yourself from any kind of uh, nutrition be aware you are depriving yourself from good health and that in turn leads to a very weak immune system the next is long gaps between meals now i don't want to term any diet plans here that talk about long gaps between meals but i'm just talking about basic um, you know uh, be, uh, people with um, certain occupations who are um, deprived of food at the right time like you just leave your house at say 6 o'clock in the morning with no breakfast the first meal that you have is maybe at around 2:33 uh, that would be your lunch in between you just grab a coffee maybe or uh, some um, fast food or samosa or something like that and some people who completely have stopped having dinner a lot of people have either stopped having breakfast thinking that it is uh, you know it is going to help me get fit or get get into a certain shape and certain people have stopped having dinner completely uh, these are diets or these are meal plans that you should never be following because what is happening is um, your hormones especially your thyroid okay thyroid responds to eating food on time you need to eat your meals on time i get so many women so many men these days coming with thyroid related problems only because they have gone on diets like this the next is eating breakfast from a packet i know it is so uh, easy to say that i'm eating a very healthy and i'm eating um, you know very um, uh, good food and uh, you know low carb and low calorie and zero sugar and high fiber and uh, all these things that is something that is written on the packet of the biscuits that you are eating 
do you really know what is there in that biscuit so i have people coming to me and telling me i start my day with a nice cup of tea without milk without sugar but i eat that high fiber biscuit or i eat that mari biscuit or i eat that digestive biscuit well hello you at least add that one teaspoon of sugar in your in your tea enjoy that nice masala tea with ginger elaichi with a little bit of milk and do not eat that biscuit that biscuit is only making things worse for you now this is what i mean when i say do not start your day from a packet so especially in the morning do not eat those high fiber biscuits even if it says high fiber on the packet even if it says high uh, uh, protein or even if it says low sugar low calorie zero uh, sugar please don't get fooled the next thing that comes in a packet for breakfast is muesli now muesli or corn flakes and parents especially okay uh, you need to start reading those food labels there are labels on your uh, on your on the packets which clearly tell you how much of sugar is in that how much of chemicals have been added to it how much of uh, in uh, preservatives have been added to it so don't get fooled just because some celebrity is doing an ad for this conflex or some uh, movie star is doing an ad for that instant uh, protein uh, powder for in the morning it is not going to help your child so we need to be smart enough we need to be intelligent enough to make these choices all right and please do not start your day with tea coffee or biscuits start your day with a glass of water eat a good local seasonal fruit have some dry nuts dry fruits even if you are a diabetic you can still start your day like this but do not eat those high fiber biscuits so called high fiber biscuits the next thing is following diets or superfood trends now suddenly during this lockdown a uh, turmeric was made into a big superfood i had so many people coming from so many different pharmaceutical companies selling turmeric capsules turmeric uh, drops turmeric uh, Uh, you no know, liquids and so many things saying that curcumin is the active ingredient in turmeric and you are supposed to take only curcumin did your grandmother or did your parents ever only extract curcumin out of the turmeric and eat it weren't you supposed to use the entire turmeric in your foods well that's it so use your common sense and do not follow diet trends or superfood trends all right the uh, the vegan diet the keto diet the gm diet i don't know what other diets there are so many diets which are there if this diet is a diet that you cannot follow till the rest for the rest of your life till the day you die it is not worth even trying okay and stop wanting quick fixes okay my marriage is in about 2 or 3 months and i you know really want to fit into my dress so i my my brother is getting married and i really want to uh look good for the wedding or some other some other occasion don't try looking for quick fixes so these quick fixes that people want is going to you know give you a lot a hell lot of trouble in the future so i have a lot of people coming to me that for about a month all they ate for lunch and for dinner was apple and a cup of green tea by the end of the month what happened to them was hair fall migraine thyroid was in a very bad state and they gained more weight than what they were even before so try not uh, looking for uh, quick fixes all right now what are the foods now these are our local foods which are very very essential to our body not just for the immune system but for those children who are having to you know sit in front of the laptop every day and strain uh, eyes and strain their brains and even uh, parents teachers and every lay person who can try these foods out the banana uh, a lot of people get so scared of banana like the minute i talk about the banana they are like oh my god but i'm going to put on weight and um, it's all sugar and my sugar levels are going to spike and um, am i supposed to eat two bananas i can i eat two bananas very very uh, common questions that i get but starting your day with water and banana there's nothing like this you feel so good after eating a banana because that 
that morning rush of that good sugar the healthy sugar that you receive from a banana no other food can actually supplement not those jamun juices and uh, i don't know what other karela juices and what you know those detox juices nothing of that can actually do you eat one or you eat two bananas in the morning with a glass of water it's the best thing you can start your day with and trust me once you start doing this almost about 30 to 40% of your uh, gastric issues or you know headaches migraines in girls um, their dysmenorrhea a lot of these issues can get sorted the next thing is the natural probiotics now a lot of people uh, talk about probiotics so ask me what are these probiotics now probiotics are nothing but it is gut bacteria it is the good bacteria that is living in your gut and this good bacteria helps you for various things and especially for strengthening your immune system i know it is it is it's like a surprise for a lot of people but about 60 to 70% of your immunity lies in your gut yes you heard me right it lies in that low in the big intestine in the colon where you have these good bacteria good viruses good fungi which is part of the whole natural probiotic now what happens to this probiotic when you eat a lot of junk food when you eat your meals late when you skip your meals when you are on a diet which tells you to eat only two meals a day or a diet which tells you don't eat rice don't eat uh, you know uh, don't eat a good fat tells you to eat only protein 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 and tells you to eat only animal protein or uh, tofu or uh, i don't know what else or on a vegan diet which sells you packets of food which says vegan only you are destroying your probiotics so what happens in turn is your immune system is going for a toss so please if anybody is trying to sell you a product or is trying to sell you a diet which tells you that uh, you know it is going to be healthy for you if you are uh, going to deprive yourself from a particular food group ask them what about my probiotics what is going to happen to that be smart enough ask them questions what is going to happen to my b12 levels what is going to happen to my vitamin d levels what about my calcium intake what about my iron intake because all these foods are responsible for giving you good micronutrient levels all right so the most important uh, natural uh, probiotics that we can eat is dahi or curd you can eat it just like natural dahi with little bit of sugar ghee or little honey you can um, you can make a raita out of it you can make a chaas out of it you know women who uh, are menopausal especially need to have chaas every day post lunch uh, even women uh, post pregnancy or anybody suffering from hyperacidity try having chaas just about 200 ml post your lunch and really it works wonders the next thing is pickles now oh my god how can you have pickles pickles are supposed to be banned isn't it this is um, uh, what is she saying pickles achar lonche you are you sure so a lot of people are told patients are told that if you have hypertension if you have hyperacidity if you have uh, some uh, issue with your gut stop pickles now what kind of pickles should we eat we should be eating our homemade pickles a recipe which was used by your grandmother your mothers your great grandparents these are the recipes of the pickle and how much pickle to eat we don't eat like a whole bowl of pickle right we just eat one or two pieces so that is exactly what you should be doing if you want natural probiotics start having dahi start having pickles in your diet and forget about those branded probiotics which are available on the shelves in the supermarkets and even in the pharmacies these are your natural probiotics the next is ghee now uh, i have done my studies of uh, as a nutritional therapist in london and when i had gone for my exams in the year 2018 i we had, i was in a restaurant in a cafe for breakfast in the morning and we had somebody ordered for pancakes and along with the pancakes they gave us some kind of a syrup a maple syrup looks like honey and they gave us a, a small uh, container having a yellowish liquid you know it was a very oily liquid so i happened to ask them what is this and they said it is clarified butter now what is this clarified butter it is nothing but ghee 
I know most of the people have have made ghee the enemy of the house. The enemy of the kitchen is ghee, right? It is it is to be banned from our lives because ghee does nothing but only adds cholesterol and fat, nothing else. But let me tell you, ghee is something that India has given to the world. The Western countries are using ghee and they are uh, propagating that ghee needs to be used in their food, in their diets. And we as Indians have stopped eating ghee, only thinking that it is bad for health. So uh, please include ghee the way it is supposed to be included on your rotis, in your dal, in your sabji. Please eat ghee. I know a lot of people tell me, why do you keep saying, you know, eat ghee, eat ghee, eat ghee. Um, I said it is never going to be enough. How much ever I tell people that ghee is important, still there will be certain people who find it so difficult. But if I had to say that olive oil is good for health, everybody would have blindly believed me. Isn't it? Why? Because the, uh, the olive oil industry is a multi-million dollar industry. They have put it in your head through some message into the media or through TV and, uh, uh, ads or, you know, through a, through a very brilliant uh, film actor or some kind of a person who's a celebrity. And that person has told you that olive oil is good, but ghee is bad, isn't it? So please, again, as I always say, use your intelligence, use your common sense and make the correct food choices. The next thing is, I've already spoken about this. Stop eating out of a packet. Learn to read food labels. Even though in the front of a juice packet, it may be written 100% fruit juice, please sometimes turn that packet and also read what is exactly in that fruit juice. Because there is no fruit at all. It's only added sugar, only added flavor, and only added preservatives. And very, very important fact is try to identify junk food. Now, how do we actually identify junk food? This is, you know, there's a lot of healthy food that is also junk food. Uh, somebody uh, was trying to sell you baked chips, grilled chips and, uh, you know, gluten-free foods. Now, let's talk about this. Packet fruit juices, which say 100% healthy. Now, what are these packet fruit juices? Like, if you squeeze one orange or if you make a... Um, uh, you know, a pot, take a pomegranate, one pomegranate, how much juice do you get? Hardly anything, right? So how do you think they are going to sell you that, uh, what, 100 rupees, uh, one liter juice for, uh, you know, saying that it's 100% healthy? I doubt. Okay, so please be intelligent uh, and uh, make the correct choices. So, and one more thing, why do you have to juice your fruit? We all have teeth and I always tell my clients this that as long as you have teeth to bite your food and eat, please bite and chew your foods and eat it. Next is salad dressings. A lot of my uh, friends and even patients, they come and tell me that I have replaced my meal, my entire lunch or my entire dinner with a salad. So I clearly ask them, what are you adding on the salad? It's a low fat, low fat salad dressing. What is this low fat salad dressing? Okay, these low fat salad dressings have got more sugar, have got more preservatives than the actual salad dressing. If you're eating a salad, at least put that actual salad dressing and eat it rather than eating this low fat and low whatever sugar salad uh, dressings. Rather, I would say salads is not an Indian trend. It is not an Indian culture. Okay, and we as Indians need to understand that having khichdi, having dal rice, having roti, having, uh, um, you know, our traditional foods as dinner is much better than eating just salads. Because, um, yeah, it's been told to us that eating a raw salad will give you the best of the nutrients, but it is not true. Okay. The next thing is gluten-free foods. I have got young girls and young boys coming to me. I have completely stopped eating gluten. I have only gone to eat gluten-free food. Uh, the latest trend is also the vegan trend. Everybody wants to turn vegan. Some people even not knowing what vegan is. Now, vegan is, um, is uh, uh, a people who stop eating and stop using animal-based products. Okay, 
I don't know how it's really possible to be hundred percent vegan because even your medicines have got animal based products. Your sh shampoos, your handbags, your clothes, everything somewhere has got animal products. But they stress on being vegan only when it comes to their food, which is completely wrong. If an Indian has to be vegan, the most important thing that is going to be cut out from their uh, diet is going to be ghee. It's going to be milk. It is going to be curd. which is very very essential for us all right so please if you unless you have a gluten allergy okay unless you have a, a kind of a reaction uh, to gluten that is the only time you need to switch to gluten free foods but otherwise there is no need okay and the next thing is 100% vegetable chips which are either baked or which are uh, roasted now there could be vegetables but that is not the way you eat your vegetables children uh, and parents please keep this in mind if your child is asking for uh, some kind of vegetable uh, it doesn't mean that you give them vegetable chips all right karela chips or this chips and that chips if they are all the same you cook the vegetable the way it is supposed to be cooked that is the time it gives you best results the next is frozen yogurt a lot of people they go to a uh, ice cream uh, center or you know they go to these uh, places and instead of having the proper ice cream people are having frozen yogurt now have you ever tried to know what is this frozen yogurt well it is even worse than ice cream it has got more sugar and it has got more preservatives so try to avoid doing such things because it can never be zero calorie there's nothing called as zero sugar all right so this is how you identify these healthy junk foods please learn to read the food labels it is very very important now another thing that i keep i always say is people are obsessed with any food that is brown isn't it brown bread brown rice brown sugar i don't know why why this obsession if you are having your tea in the morning and evening two cups please add that one teaspoon of white sugar it is safe there is nothing that that white sugar is not your enemy unless and until you are overdoing it in the form of cakes pastries and biscuits all right uh, brown uh, rice now for a fact i don't know there are a lot of people who call a goan rice as brown rice the goan rice is not brown rice the goan rice is parboiled rice it is called hand pounded single polished rice it is not brown rice brown rice is the rice that you get in the supermarkets which comes in these packets and it is almost three times more the price is almost three times more than the actual rice so try to avoid that rice now what happens when you eat brown rice brown rice is very high in fiber very high in fiber and it is not possible for a human being to digest that brown rice maybe a few days or few weeks your body will be able to digest the brown rice but slowly slowly you will be developing a lot of issues so try to avoid and brown bread there is there is no place in goa that makes the actual brown bread i don't know from where you are getting your bread but i know for a fact that brown bread abroad the the trend has come from the west yes that brown bread cannot be even chewed it is that hard and it is that rubbery it is it's 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 very very dense so the brown bread that you get in goa is just sugar that is caramelized brown sugar that has been added or some kind of a color that has been added so don't be fooled don't be obsessed with brown now how to identify these junk foods there are four major types this is a uh, 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 what do you call it um, categorized by me only so addictive foods foods that are chips fries cookies no one can eat just one food that is the addictive food okay you cannot if you've taken one sip you need to finish that bottle if you've eaten one bite you have to completely finish that cookie or those chips addictive foods then is the add on calories the add on calories the sugary drinks alcohol you know all these are add on calories next is automatic foods foods you just swiggy right now isn't it we just call up swiggy or we call up zomato and i don't know what else and we just place our orders the automatic foods that come and next is the adulterated foods now these are highly processed foods which look very nice on the plate okay or oh, it, it's when it is cooking but these are uh, just filled with a lot of chemicals flavors taste makers and it just makes it last longer 
but it is not healthy now how to get rid of your sugar cravings sugars are always hidden i have already explained to you how you are supposed to identify you know sugars in certain foods by reading the fruit la uh, food labels healthy fats include healthy fats so peanuts cashew nuts ghee don't worry these are not going to give you cholesterol they are not to make you fat children parents please keep this in mind healthy fats are are very very essential for the body and cook your food with spices now please don't have those raw salads or don't have these boiled or steamed vegetables this is not our uh, type of cooking methods that we've been using we've been using methi we've been using um, you know uh, other spices turmeric jeera garlic ginger in cooking our vegetables or cooking even our meats please do it that way don't have only a grilled chicken breast for uh, dinner thinking that it is very high protein you're eating lot of chemicals also along with that chicken breast all right so please keep this in mind now i know there are a lot of women uh, here so that is why i tried to i put this slide actually uh, and i'm still sticking to our topic of the immunity all these things are actually going to build your immune system if you are healthy right so sabudana is something that women with hormonal imbalance irregular menses menopause sabudana kichdi even young girls huh? sabudana sago it is also called as uh, it it is tapioca actually so that is very very good for health next is your rajgira chila or the shira made of rajgira now rajgira may be a new word for a lot of people but this is a millet children it is a millet okay just like you have jowar and ragi rajgira is also a millet so if ra rajgira is not available you can always have nachni or you can have jowar coconut coconut is local to us so please if you have stopped adding coconut to your vegetables or coconut to your curries or coconut laddus or coconut to your puddings or uh, sorry your desserts homemade dessert please add coconut use coconut oil for cooking i know sometimes people find it very difficult uh, because of the odor that coconut has but it is the best thing you can do for your health curd rice dal rice for lunch and dinner women especially uh, stop having that salad or that protein shake or you know things like that for your dinner i would say have a little bit of rice have it on time between about 7:30 to 8:30 have your dinner on time and please eat the right food banana i have already spoken to you all about banana especially girls with irregular menses dysmenorrhea should have banana and the last one is sabja and haleem seeds sabja seeds are uh, the faluda seeds that we call it, that we put in the faludas that we have and haleem seeds are garden cress seeds they look just like sabja seeds the same size but they are red in color so the haleem seeds are very very good for people with irregular menses hormonal imbalance infertility so women please keep this in mind now the last thing that i also spoke to you about what hampers our immunity is obesity people with obesity have a lot of uh, other issues not just the immunity but they are at a risk for developing heart problems or uh, diabetes and many other issues right so whatever i have explained to you above is to give you optimum health and finally achieve your goal of losing weight rather losing fat from the body there is no magic pill or no magic potion for weight loss or rather to build your immunity or build you know have a very good life and a good uh, you know good health there is no magic pill you can't pop in pills and say okay i'm taking pills and i'm you know taking the best supplements and um i'm taking this decoction which i ordered all the way from america there is nothing like that so all the above things have to be kept in mind uh if you want to have a good immune system and also if you want to be fit now let's do a reality check i've come to the end of my presentation almost uh now tell me which food can give you a strong immune system um uh, you can either say it out loud or if you want you can type it in the chat box uh okay i can hear i can see banana banana bananas very good absolutely that is one what else what else can give you a good immune system banana 
वेरी गुड घी मिल्क कर्ड एग्स एब्सोल्यूटली एंड वॉट आर द चेंजेस दैट यू नीड टू मेक इन योर लाइफ स्टाइल वॉट आर द फ्यू चेंजेस दैट आई स्पोक अबाउट दैट आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू नो हैविंग अ गुड इम्यूनिटी एंड टू बिल्ड योर बिल्ड अ गुड हेल्थी लाइफ हेल्थी बॉडी that parents and teachers can also uh, can also speak it's not only for the children exactly sleep on time enough of sleep exercise eat homemade food that is very very important all right so very very good i'm glad that uh, you guys have understood that you know just uh, eating from a packet or eating supplements or eating these uh, called so so called super foods is not going to give you a good immune system what you actually need for a good immune system is all a balance basically of good habits and of good eating habits as well so a balance of good sleep good eating and also a balance of your uh, activity or exercises right so uh, i've come to the end of my uh, um presentation uh i always believe in this that good health is not a coincidence it's a choice and this has been my tagline since the time i started my practice as a homeopathic doctor and then i went on to do my clinical nutrition okay good evening all of you on behalf of jan utkarsh shikshan sanstha shrimati chukkoba nai khar secondary school i extend a very hearty uh, you know thanks to our resource person for today dr Uh, Jolene Fernandez, who has enlightened us today uh, on a very crucial and a very significant uh, significant topic, and uh, in such tough times, because uh, uh, in such times definitely we cannot take our health for granted. And thank you for sharing, and we are we are very much in fact obliged to you for sharing your rich knowledge with us, and you know thank bursting you. out the yeah bursting the you know the nutrition uh, myths yeah. <laughs> the nutrition bits and beautifully giving out the rich indian diet that our ancestors have been you know uh, we are quite fortunate to have such a uh, rich indian diet that our we are yeah yeah so moving on i would also like to thank our principal uh, shrimati uh, shri devi pr who has been a very constant source of inspiration and has lent a constant support throughout the process of this uh, webinar so thank you madam for having uh, you know uh, for being there i express my gratitude to the heads of the institutions and the participants also of the all the high secondary across the state for your valuable presence uh, an event like this definitely needs a lot of planning and hard work so now i would like to uh, extend a uh, very special thanks to all those who have been working behind the scenes so a uh, big thank you to our health in, uh, health instructor dr sayami prabhu desai coordinator of this webinar and her team Aditi Shetty and Siddhi Naik, uh, special thanks to you also for designing a beautiful poster, and uh, also a big thanks to IT instructor Sir Manoj Naik for providing us with the technical assistance for today. Finally, I would like to thank all the participants who have participated in this uh, uh, webinar wholeheartedly. So thank you all. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much.